My name is Kendall Wright and I'm a student at Mississippi State University currently enrolled in the College of Education. This is my Tier 1 intervention project for Dr. K. Bricado's class, Planning for the Diverse Learner, or EDF 4243. Before I go any further, I want to discuss what exactly Tier 1 intervention is. Our education classes here at Mississippi State are full of instruction for us dealing with Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3. Yet today, we will be focusing solely on Tier 1 intervention, simply because it is required for the majority of the students who will step foot in our classrooms. At its very most basic, Tier 1 is simply classroom management. It involves all aspects of regular teaching conditions and how teachers and students set standards together and then work towards those goals. It is an active instruction meant to reach the average student and therefore reduce the number of students who might later become at risk. Because it serves a majority of the students within the classroom, Tier 1 instruction is geared towards a very diverse population. There are five key components of Tier 1 intervention. The first is fantastic curriculum design. With great curriculum as an immediate resource, teachers have great lessons and activities at the very tip of their fingers. Having good classroom rules and procedures is another part of Tier 1, because without structure in the class, nothing can ever be learned. The third component of Tier 1 is centered around motivation. Motivation is key in the classroom. Without the students, as well as the teacher, being motivated to actively learn and grow together, only temporary learning will take place. Another essential part of Tier 1 is the creation of a physically inviting and safe environment. This supports both academic and social growth in the classroom. The final element of Tier 1 instruction is collaboration with the families of the students as well as the community. Today, I will be focusing especially on the last one. In all of our education classes here at Mississippi State, especially in our human development classes and methods, we examine the first four components so closely, I personally wanted to learn more about interacting with families and what all that entailed. Why is this so important, you may be asking? I mean, family involvement is great, but is it really necessary? Yes, it is. There have been countless studies done over the years on this very debate, and all of the publishings support each other. It has been shown that family involvement in schools is correlated with higher student achievement, better attitudes toward learning, and lower dropout rates. No matter what the SES, or ethical or cultural backgrounds or parents' own education level. A study done by the University of Michigan noted that when parents and the community got more involved with students' actual learning, more so than just attending a PTA meeting once a year, for instance, students' achievement rates and positive attitudes towards school were greatly affected. It is also no wonder that students' learning experiences are enhanced when teachers begin to develop a better understanding of their own backgrounds and experiences and then incorporate those into the class. It is also essential to develop a trust between the school and the home so as to create a context that supports student learning and success. In addition, family beliefs and attitudes about education deeply influence students' own perception. As Bronfenbrenner's ecological theory points out, the family is closest to the child and therefore generally has the most influence. The school is close, but the family is closer. This is why it is so essential to bring families into their children's education and then collaborate with them. Having what is learned in school supported and then reinforced at home can make all of the difference in the world. But why is it that so many parents aren't involved? If statistics show all the good that can occur when families get involved, why aren't parents lining the doors of the classroom? In a study done some years ago, parents were surveyed as to the mysterious why behind this. The results were quite convicting to teachers who had always looked down on parents who never seemed to get engaged. The majority of parents had difficulty getting more involved due to financial or economic constraints. In this day and age, we must recognize that not all students' families are like the Brady Bunch or Leave it to Beaver. In many families, both parents may work, or a single parent may have to work more than one job, leaving very little time to help with homework or attend class parties or meetings. Some parents may also have had their own negative experiences in school, or may have dropped out and managed to do just fine for themselves. Still others may have had so many negative relationships 
with their own children's past teachers that they assume this year will be no different. They would rather avoid the teacher than listen to how awful their child is again and again and again. In today's diverse society, there are also numerous parents who are hesitant to meet a new teacher due to the overwhelming cultural or linguistic differences. It can be frightening for both the parent and the teacher, say if the parent speaks very little English. There are also many families that want to get involved, yet simply don't know how or what to do. Once students get to middle school and high school, there is an increasing lack of opportunities for parents to get involved. This is something I know my own mom has experienced recently as my younger siblings have transitioned from a small private school where everyone knew everyone to a very large public school. So, as teachers, we must not always automatically assume that parents don't care at all about their children's education. While this truly might be the case for some, it is definitely not the rule. We as teachers should try to find ways to bring parents into the classroom and overcome the difficulties that may stand in the way. But how is this possible? Through my own experience and research, I would like to share some simple ways to start incorporating families into the classroom. The first is creating what is known as family projects. I had never really considered letting families help with projects until this semester in my methods class I'm taking. I'm studying to be a math teacher and one of the really neat activities or long-term projects that was shown to us was fantasy football math. Now, this is a long-term project in which students are given a salary cap and can buy players and trade and then each week they calculate their points, basically just like the real fantasy football. There are many different mathematical concepts such as graphing, determining, and comparing statistics, and many, many more that this is geared towards reinforcing in students. This project also is a great opportunity for middle school students to work with their families. One suggestion that followed this project was hosting a huge draft night in which parents and students could come together and select their teams, therefore making family teams. If a collective draft night could not be organized, then the families could simply draft their own teams at home and then keep up with it. This project would continue through the whole semester and at the very end, you would see which family won. I thought this was a great idea and it was a very unique way to get parents involved in a more fun way that most people would jump at the chance to participate in. Another neat thing I've learned about has been third-party texting services for teachers. Sending out texts or emails to parents is a great way to keep them updated on what's going on in the class, any homework or projects that are being assigned, or activities that might require parent help. These are just a few examples of the more popular services that teachers are able to use. These are all free for teachers and provide a very easy way to message reminders to both parents and students without using a personal phone number. These are opt-in services, which means at the beginning of the year, the teacher would simply give a code and then parents would then have the choice of participating or not. Another neat advantage to these is that they can be sent by phone or computer, making it as convenient as possible for the teacher. Having family members or members of the community coming and speaking to the class is a great involvement tool as well. Inviting family members or just people from the community to introduce a new lesson and explain how this particular math is used in their field would be a neat, very personal way for students to see how math relates to the real world. For instance, this could mean having a chef or even just a mom who loves to cook come and speak to a sixth grade math class about mixed fractions. Or it could be having an architect or a construction worker come and discuss area and perimeter to an algebra class. Or having a banker explain how rates of exchange work. The possibilities are endless if simply an effort is made. It is also important to be in contact with parents more than just when their child has academic or behavioral problems. Sometimes it's appreciated when teachers make the effort to let parents know when their child does something great. It's always a nice surprise to get a good phone call rather than a bad one. It also means a lot to parents when teachers are gentler when going to them about a problem. It sounds better to say, Johnny is doing so well in math this year, I've been so proud of his academic improvement. However, he's been causing a lot of distractions in class lately, and I was hoping you could help me figure out why and maybe have some suggestions. Then, your son is terrible. You need to deal with his behavior issues now. Having a parent's support and having them wanting to help you 
makes things so much easier than offending them and starting a war. Hosting a family night at the beginning of the year serves as a great way to meet parents and show them the plans you are having for the year. It is also a good way for parents to meet each other and form relationships as well. This is something we do at our schools back at home and it serves as an icebreaker almost because the parents are often more apt to return to talk to a teacher they've already met than to initiate contact if they have a question or a concern for the very first time. Finding creative ways to encourage parents to get involved with what's going on can also make all of the difference in the world. For instance, my younger sister's eighth grade math teacher this year is involving all of her classes in this great attempt to raise money to purchase iPads. Now, before you start getting worried that they're going to spend their math class playing Angry Birds, don't. iPads are a great tool full of mathematical apps that help students. In fact, iPad use in math classes increases achievement scores by 20%. So you can see why she's doing this. To accomplish this, however, she has gone above and beyond enlisting all the help she can get. For example, she planned a fundraiser with Chili's and for a night, 10% of their sales went to help with the iPad purchases. She encouraged students and their families to go and support their class by eating dinner at Chili's. This way, even busy families could participate. She also received a grant last month, which would match whatever amount was donated in a week by the community. Once again, it was an easy way for parents to have a hand in bettering their children's education. Finally, it's important to be readily available to parents and students when needed. Parents will get concerned and they will have questions at some point. When parents sense an effort is being made to work with them and their kids, they become much more willing to make an effort themselves. Spending so much time both thinking about this and researching ideas made me really consider what type of teacher I will be and how I will manage family involvement in my class. First of all, I want to embrace diversity rather than flee from it. In a classroom full of diverse students, it only makes sense that their families will be just as diverse, if not even more. There will be parents I don't agree with or have problems communicating with, but I must remain determined to embrace that rather than letting it scare me. If it means having the Spanish teacher sitting in and help communication flow freely between me and an English language learner's family, well then so be it. Learning about students' families will help me learn about the students themselves and help me make their learning experience in my class so much more relevant. And because of the diversity, each family will get involved in the classroom in many more variety of ways. Secondly, I will do my best to get family and community members involved in my students' education. I know that as teachers, we will need all the help we can get, and this will only better the quality of the students' education. I will also constantly fight the urge to take the easy way out. Between the lesson plans and the grading papers and the meetings and not to mention all the responsibilities outside of the school, it will be so easy to just sit back and not really work that hard to get families more involved. While it will be so much more of an effort, I believe that in the end, the results will speak for themselves. I saw this cartoon the other day and it spoke volumes to me. While teachers do hold immense responsibility in where schools are today, it is meant to be a collaborative effort with the parents. We as teachers should stop blaming parents and begin finding creative ways to bring them back into the classroom where they belong and create the support system essential to the successful education for all of our students.